from many small towns across America. Manufacturing and agriculture really keep their economic engines running, but in the face of automation and consolidation, some believe innovation will become the true driving force. CGTN's Mark New introduces us to this week's Inspirer, who believes art, local talent, and some old technologies can transform communities. In Washington's Yakima Valley, a two and a half hour drive southeast of Seattle, lies the town of Tayatun, population 1,200. In this city park 13 years ago, Seattle resident and artist Ed Marquand stopped on his bike ride to fix a flat tire. This one was hardly doing anything at all. That building was empty, that building was empty, but it was so obvious that things were just barely holding on. Ed began buying properties and brainstorming with friends on what he could do here that couldn't be done in Seattle. Titan has a, a population of about 65% Latino. They came here because of the agriculture industry, the orchards. Most of the Latinos come from countries where things are made by hand. So the appreciation for the handmade artisan uh, business is something that we've kind of lost in this country. At Marquand's Paper Hammer Studios, you'll find workers like Maria Solario, who used to sell food in the orchards. She did much of the work to create this, a book that celebrates the lone surviving tree in a village in Costa Rica. This is a retrospective of the work of Japanese textile designer Reiko Sudo. I make all the cover and um, stitch the um, inside sheets. We are able to attract people like Maria, and when they work on this kind of work for a decade, they become better at it than anybody I could imagine getting in Seattle to do this work. And just down the road is Mighty Titan's warehouse and headquarters. Inside, machines date back to the 1950s, some even further. Years ago, welder Steve Morgan was laid off, but fortunately he'd taken art classes decades earlier that made him perfect for this job. It's nice to know that something that I did enjoy that I can actually do again. The books go all around the world. I mean, we've had a couple books actually presented to the Pope and are now in the Vatican archives. This book he's helping to make is for horse enthusiasts and will sell for at least $5,000 a copy. The precision, texture, and artistry are all things that can't be replicated with a laser printer. One of our mottos around here is, isn't it nice when something outlives its obsolescence? And much of the equipment we use here, much of the techniques we use here are from 100 years ago. And as we become more and more digital, I think there's a human desire to be attracted to things that are more tactile and that are handmade and to appreciate that craft. And inside the mighty Titan warehouse, you'll find some artistic surprises, like in this room. It's the Trimpen Sound Space, which houses the work of German-American musician and artist Trimpen. This work is the prepared piano. <laughs> Visitors who come to the artist's special showings are also treated to a percussion orchestra. And that includes beats created by objects you'd never expect. Right next door, Marquand shows us the gallery space where artworks are exhibited for an annual contest. No piece can be larger than 10 inches in any dimension. Mighty Titan has positioned itself as an incubator for artists in business aiming to break the mold of the stereotypical image of the starving artist. If they've been able to survive for decades on their artwork, they are much more resourceful than a banker working a 40-hour week in a bank. That banker isn't using a lot of imagination to solve problems. But if you ask a designer, you ask an architect, you ask um, a graphic designer, you ask a painter, into a problem to help come up with a solution, the perspectives you're going to get from those individuals will be fresh, they'll be different. One of Mighty Titan's fresh ideas is creating seven two and a half meter wide glass mosaics to be placed all around the city square. 
The designs are based on vintage fruit box labels from the 1930s to 1960s, in homage to the area's farm families and packing companies that helped make Tayatan what it is today. I have seen like people faces surprised just think about the apples or pears around here, not thinking that it's like a little treasure that you have find in here. So I'm like pretty part of the town, like that it's going to be here after I die, it's going to still there. Mighty Titan has so far secured funding for three of the murals, and a fourth is raising money on Kickstarter. It hopes visitors will stop off the highway to see the beautiful 10,000 tile work of arts and then spend money while in town. Marquand says the good old days can never come back. That's why he keeps searching for new ideas that make both commercial and cultural sense as a model and inspiration for farm communities across the country. Mark New, CGTN, Tayatan, Washington.